Okay, here's the chip of the day. It is an LM134. Now, we did, uh, I did a video on a TL431, which was a programmable voltage source. This is very, very similar, but it's a programmable current source. It is a three pin device. Um, so it will look very, very similar. It's just a regular uh, TL92. And, uh, but it, it's, its third pin allows you to regulate current. It operates up to 40 volts. Uh, 0.02% uh, per volt current regulation. Programmable from one microamp to 10 milliamps. Um, it's really cool part, um, but I doubt that you've seen one. Uh, they're, they're, they're pretty cool. So um, the way that you operate with these things is, is the same as the, um, same as like the TL431, only even easier. Um, you have a, uh, an in and out, and, and it, it is a current uh, source, so um, some people say current sink, whatever, it's a source here, bas basically sourcing current. Um, and uh, there's a plus and a minus, and then there's this resistor that you put in here. It sets up a little bit of current in, in, from the, on the outside that sets up this main current. And um, there's some math here if you want to set up the right, the right values and stuff, but we'll just play with it today. We'll put in different value resistors here, and we'll measure how much current goes through this thing. So, uh, lots of things about how it operates. Um, let, me get, let me get to one of the graphs, which I think is more, is more interesting for what we're going to do. Uh, let's see, which one is it? Yeah, this is a good graph. Um, so, uh, we have uh, the voltage, so we'll, we'll be out here somewhere. And then these are the various currents. So you can see here, one microamp, 10, 100, one milliamp, 10 milliamps. And then these are the resistance values. Uh, 6.8K, 680 ohms, 68 ohms, 14 ohms. So the higher the ohms, the more current you have going through there, right? And so uh, let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and hook one up and uh, play with it. All right, here, just down here. And uh, let's see here, let me hook up a current meter. We'll go here, we'll go micro, we'll put micro ohms. All right, so can we see all of this? in the frame without glare, no glare, there we go, right there. Um, so we have a resistance box here and uh, we will have a uh, voltage into the part. So let me turn my power supply on and you can see we're getting 65 microamps. This is a microamp scale, 65 microamps for, uh, we have it set to 1000 ohms. So let's go to 200, uh, 22K, the uh, 2.2K. 2.2K, we get uh, 30 microamps. And 680 ohms, we get almost 100 microamps. 740 ohms, 330 ohms, 220 ohms, 100 ohms. 100 ohms, we have uh, 100, uh, 670. And at 1,000, we had 600 and... 65. So, you know, there's a little bit, the math, there's a little bit of extra care that you need to take into programming these things. And my resistance box isn't very accurate either. Here's 47 ohms. We're getting up to 1.4 milliamps. So it's very, very easy to use. You just put in some, um, let's see if we can get down to a microamp. So this is go down to a microamp. Let's see if we can get to a microamp. Uh, here's uh, 6.8K, 10K. 22K, 33K, and 47K. So 47K, we've got 1.3 microamps, 68K. There we go, 68K, we've got uh, one microamp. So this thing has a really good range. Very, very good range. Uh, it's, a cool, it's a cool little part. Um, I've never really used it before, uh, but I can see lots of applications for it. So let's talk about applications. Let's talk about one of the things that I've noticed in doing these things is if you haven't ever been an engineer, it's very difficult for you to see the big picture. 
So I show you a new part and you go, hey, that's great, but how do you use it, right? Um, part of being an engineer is knowing all of the different parts, knowing all of the things that you can use. They're, they're building blocks. They're like having a big Lego set. And you need to have all of these parts memorized. And when you go to solve a problem, somebody says, um, okay, I, I have a bunch of chickens and they lay eggs. And I need some automated equipment that uh, take the eggs, wash them, sort them, and then put them into boxes, okay? And so you can say, well, how do I do that? How do I count eggs? Well, do I mechanically touch them with a switch? Do I have a photodiode, uh, some type of photo interrupter uh, to, to, to measure which ones I have? Do I, do I have to weigh them? Do I have an electronic scale? And then, how, and then I, I'm going to put them in a box. I need to count them. I need to count 12 because uh, 12 goes into each one. And so, well, it's actually two rows of six. So I need to count to six and then I need to change rows and count to another six. There's a whole bunch of things that one would need to do. Um, and each one of those things, counting or weighing or sizing, all of those things require a different circuit. And so when the, when the engineer is designing that circuit, he has to know all those tricks. Oh, I need a photo, I need a photo, blah, 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 blah. And um, in order for me to have it accurate, I need to have a constant current going into my photodiode. And so where do I get a constant current? Oh, oh, LM314, I remember that somewhere. Somebody taught me that once. Uh, LM314 can give me a constant current that I need, right? I, or I need, I'm, I'm building a, uh, uh, I'm building a differential amplifier and I have, have a long tail differential pair of, of NPNs and I need to put a nice uh, current source in the, in the tail. Um, oh yeah, LM134, okay. So, um, so where does the engineer get all these ideas? How does he learn all of these tricks? Well, he reads data books a lot. He, gets, he, he has to learn all of these parts and what they do. He can watch MSI guy and, and he, get, get, the, get, get the chip of the day. But let's take a look at this uh, data sheet because some other, um, some other viewers have pointed out, if you want to learn electronics, read a bunch of data sheets. And they're absolutely right. Um, data sheets often have application notes in the back. So, um, so this kind of answers the question of those, those people who have been commenting, oh, it's a, it's a new part, great, that's great, but how do you use it, right? Well, you go to the app note and you, um, or the data sheet or an app note, and you see how it's used. Uh, here's, it's once being used as a ground reference uh, Fahrenheit thermometer, okay? Here's the circuit. This one is terminating remote sensor for voltage output, right? And so um, you need to have a constant cur current if you are trying to measure the voltage across the load. Um, low output impedance thermometer, so another, uh, another thermometer uh, trick. Um, and then they get kind of complicated, right? Low output impedance thermometer, another thermometer thing. Okay, so here's, okay, I can only go up to a couple milliamps, but I need higher current than that. Well, you can set a current through here, and then that will get multiplied by this transistor, and the whole current will be going through this leg, and so I will uh, use the resistor in the in the leg to, in order to get a higher current, right? Um, let's see. And there's quite a few applications in this uh, in this data sheet. Here's a micropower bias. Okay. Here we need to have a uh, an LM four four two fifty have a, have one microamp of current going in. Um, let's see here, low, low input voltage reference driver. All right. Uh, here's a cool one. So if you want to generate a ramp, okay, you can create a integrator. You can integrate the uh, charge on a capacitor, but you need to have a constant current. You need to charge the, charge the capacitor with a constant current to get a linear ramp. And so guess what? Here's your constant current, right? And then we're going to gate that on and off with just a 2N2222. So very, very simple circuit here. I like this one a lot. Ramp generator, okay? Works great. Uh, 
Here's one for a 1.2 volt reference, operates on one uh, on uh, 10 microamps and two volts. So somebody needed a 1.2 volt reference, very, very low current because it was battery powered, they only had two volts available and they couldn't consume a lot of energy so they only have uh, 10 microamps running through this. Um, because it operates on a low, uh, a low input, uh, you can do a 1.2 volt regulator with only a 1.8 minimum input, so a low, a low voltage dropout regulator. Um, remember Zener diodes? Zener diodes uh, usually have a resistor uh, setting up the current through the, uh, through the Zener diode. But if you have a variable input, the actual voltage will change. Zeners are not flat. They actually will move up and down depending on how much voltage is across them. And by having a constant current, that will make them more accurate. So here they're using it to do, uh, to do zener bi biasing. So, you know, a dozen circuits, um, even there's some more in the back here, uh, a dozen circuits uh, for, for using the LM134. Now, a lot of times these are circuits because they want to try to sell the part, but they're trying to educate the engineer. Hey, look, here are all these new tricks in your bag. We're giving you more tricks. We're giving you more Legos, more building blocks to put together different things. And the more you have, the better of an engineer you become.